All right, it's another Q&A session here on the final mile. We answer all of your questions. Um, so YouTube comments, great way to ask questions. Facebook group, great way to ask questions. Info at Freight360.net or the contact field on our website. Uh, great way to get a hold of us. And we will do our best to answer your questions. Make sure you check out our website and the Freight Broker Basics course. If you're looking for an educational option on how to start a brokerage, the playbook to grow it, build a carrier and customer network, hire folks, all that good stuff. And please take a moment to check out the sponsors in the description box or the um, you know, whether it's the episode show notes on podcast or description box on YouTube. Um, our partnership with the sponsors helps us continue to bring uh, all of you listeners this content at no cost. Um, all right, Ben, let's get right into it. We got three questions today. The first one, um, this was a direct um, question from a listener through our website, I believe, it says, uh, as brokers, so as brokers call on shippers and are prospecting for customers, are they finding customers that don't currently have a broker or do the shippers usually have a broker and you're just trying to replace the current broker? Uh, so I did send him a message. I said, short answer is, both, but we'll we'll break it down on on this episode today. So, um, I'll give a very brief response, and I'll let you kind of elaborate. Uh, the reality is, if someone's, it's probably very rare that they're not using a broker, and you're going to come in and become that broker solution for them. Um, it's possible, right? They might just have a few asset based companies that they they work with, and they they might be paying more than they need to because they haven't shopped around using a broker. But more likely than not, um, they're already working with somebody else and you're going to try and come in and be better than that existing broker, whether it's service failures, building a better relationship, better communication. Maybe you can help find better rates or solutions for them. Uh, I would say if I had to guess, probably 99% of the people that you're prospecting, um, you're trying to win their business from somebody else. It might even be higher than 99%. What do you think? What, what's your experience on this? I'd say that's definitely true. Like the overwhelming majority are already working with, in fact, not just one broker, but usually multiple brokers. And the exception of that are usually newer companies that have come into existence in the past two or three years, maybe. If it's a company that existed pre-pandemic 2019, 2020, like everyone had so many issues just getting capacity that almost everybody reached out to any broker or any broker that reached out to them. They, they took their phone call, used, yeah. took their phone call yeah. and were using them in some capacity. So the vast majority, you're trying to replace somebody or make it onto the team. And that's the analogy I use. Like when I'm working with a client on what this looks like, I'm like, the coach already has a full team. I mean, like he's got his first team squad of baseball players or basketball players, whatever the analogy you want to use. Your job is to basically hustle next to the field every single day while they practice and play games. So the coach sees you and then inevitably you don't usually get your shot until one of the starting lineup either gets sick, doesn't show up, makes an air. Some issue needs to almost always happen with their A team for them to consider the person on the bench or behind the bench trying to get the coach's attention. That's prospecting. You got to get their attention and then you got to prove to them in any and every way possible that you deserve to be on the team and included to be able to help like the other people that he's, he or she has trusted forever. That's a great analogy. I never thought about it like sports, but like every NFL team has a 53 man roster and your goal during uh, practice and training season is to try and get on that roster. Yep. Um, you know, same, same goes with like baseball, right? You've got uh, well, the farm systems, a better example, right? Mm -hmm. Think about it. If you're, if you're in major league baseball, um, those are the customers, right? Now you're if you're prospecting a customer, you're in double A or triple A and you're trying to get a spot on the major league team. Same thing with hockey, with racing, like this stuff. Yep. Um, every sport, right? You're just you're they're likely it's not like, oh, we're just gonna create a new, you know, you get the new expansion team and everyone kind of gets a pick of the litter on who they're gonna bring in. Um that's the exception, not the rule. The the reality is that you're likely competing against somebody else. And this is why I always tell people is you know, don't be afraid of like 
conversations that don't go anywhere after three, four calls. Like if you're persistent, like some of the best success stories are like, yeah, you know, the 10th time I called them, they, they just had one of their go-tos like slip up. They were pissed off and they were like, you know what? You're clearly persistent. Let me give you a shot with this one. And that is like, you have the, I mean, you're, you're when like hard work. Quotes. When, it's like success, yeah, when heart, when hard work meets opportunity, opportunity you end up with yeah. luck, right? Yeah, I yeah, need luck. the opportunity to happen. Like I need somebody to drop the ball or something to go wrong usually, but I am persistent enough that I am standing underneath that hoop for when that basketball doesn't go in because it's coming right to me. And that's when I've got to show what I said I could show. Right. Yeah. You usually can't create the opportunity. You create the hustle so that when the opportunity happens, you're positioned to be able to help. Yeah, exactly. Great, great answers. Um, next question. I'm struggling to get carriers to work with our new MC, even with attractive payment methods. Can you suggest strategies to help us build better relationships with them? Um, yes, we have. And I would recommend go watch our full length episode with uh, Des Clark. He, um, we did, this was probably from over a year ago now, um, talked about how he built his brokerage from scratch yep. and, um, it, it comes down to old school relationship building, right? Cause here's what happens when you're a brand new brokerage, the same way that a new customer doesn't have credit history, you don't have credit history or worthiness when it comes to carriers or even more so the factoring companies that will tell that carrier if they're going to factor a load for, for you. Um, so well, here's why too, for anyone out there, most carriers have a factoring company and all a factoring company is, is a credit company. Yep. So that factoring company looks at your brokerage and goes, there's no credit history. They haven't had enough payments or bills that they've paid for us to know whether or not they'll pay us. So the factoring company goes, we're not going to pay a carrier for this brokerage because we have no ability to know what you don't think we're going to get paid getting a credit card when you're 18 right like there's some companies that will but most of them are like well like you need some history for us to be able to give you a loan that's all the factoring company saying that's why this is usually hard as well as there are no reviews on your brokerage and the carrier doesn't know anything because there's no information on you yet yeah um so what i would recommend well so they brought up attractive payment methods i at least want to talk about this. So one of the things that we do recommend is offer better terms. Like, yeah, I know we're risky because we're, we're new. Um, we're going to pay, you know, most people are paying you in 30 days, maybe 21. We'll pay you in 14. We'll pay you in 10. We'll give you a quick pay of uh, one business day at no, like no cost to you. Like we'll fund it all up front. Yep. Right. And that takes some obviously financial investment from you. Um, or obviously if you're using a factoring company yourself, you, you know, that's where you might be able to, to do that. But that's the attractive pay option that we've uh, mentioned before. Now, some other ways, it's going to be different. Like what's important to everybody is going to be a little different. So if a carrier says, we can't work with you, you're too new, my response would be, well, what would what would it look like for us to work with you? What would you need to see? Right. Mm -hmm. And the same thing goes with your conversations with the factoring company. Oh, my factory company says we can't work with you. You're too new. Okay. Can you give me a point of contact there so I can call them and find out what their requirements are and what we would need to do this to, you know, for yeah. that to suffice? Because I think what I'm, I suppose is a lot of new brokers that don't succeed for this reason, they're probably not making that call and saying, Hey, I understand we don't meet your normal qualifications. What does that look like? What is there, you know, what can we do to help make you feel comfortable to do business with us? Maybe it's a personal guarantee. Maybe it's a look at um, uh, personal credit from a, or a credit from another business that you ran or, you know, maybe they want you to, um, you know, the same way that people do like uh, pre-funded credit cards. Is, am I using the word right there? Right. Where like prepay. we'll basically have you build. You're basically prepay. You'll deposit. Yeah. 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 Um, there's different ways. There's no like cookie cutter answer because it's going to be different for every company and every um, owner operator or trucking company that's out there. But you need to make, you need to have the conversation and ask. The reality is, some of them might just say like, "No, yep. we have a minimum." The same way that some brokers say, "I'm not using a carrier unless their authority is at least this old." Full stop. That is the case for some carriers and some factoring companies, but. Remember, there are hundreds of thousands 
of um, carriers that are out there. Someone, a lot of them, for you know that matter, are willing to work with you if you can find a way to come to terms on what makes both parties feel comfortable. Right? We've got carriers out, and we might say, "Hey, we normally look for X, Y, and Z because we can't." figure this one out, we're going to ask for, you know, D, E, and F. Like, you know, it's like, oh, you don't have an inspection history. Well, it's because you're new. Um, so let's find another way to verify that you are real and not a fraudster. Um, same thing goes with, hey, I'm a new broker. Um, but oh, by the way, I worked for four years over at this brokerage. I can give you 10 references for carriers that I worked with. Never had an issue with getting trucks paid on time. Boom. Right. That's another option. So what do you, what's your take? Outside of that, I'm going to go even a little higher level, right? Because I think you hit everything that I would say and I don't need to repeat it. But I think the bigger takeaway is the same thing that is true for this question is the same thing that is true for I'm making a lot of phone calls to prospects, but I'm not getting customers. The same thing is true. Anytime you've ever had somebody tell you no about anything ever, right? To me, like, and again, this is something that like I pay attention to and try to cultivate, but it's like, No's just the first response. Okay, well, let me understand why it's a no, right? What does a four-year-old say when you tell them no? Why? It's so exactly. Why? It's so funny because we were talking why? about this yesterday. Like my wife and I are saying, I'm like, I, I just anything that I actually want to get done, I am going to keep asking until I clearly understand why and why and what else I might be able to do, what other options that no one's thought of, and just try to keep pushing forward until I get to an ultimate no or an ultimate yes, right? And it's usually four or five attempts. With a prospect, it might be 15, it might be a year. With a factoring company, it might be two conversations with maybe two different employees. Yeah. But I'm going to ask every question and go like, well, what you framed it perfect. Like, that's exactly what I'd say. Like, hey, what would it look like if we work together? What do you need? What are your requirements? What are your suggested requirements? The things you like to see, the things you need to see. Where are we in both of these lists? Is, and then ask this question. Is there anything I can do outside of that list that might make this doable? Is there anything you can think of or that I could think of or that would be willing to do to maybe make this work, right? Because there are all of the solutions for why you win in anything are on the margins. So that few percentage of chances or things that no one's thinking about, no one's talking about. And if you ask enough questions and you dig far enough, there's usually something there. Maybe it's yeah. a deposit for five grand with this factoring company to get those carriers. Maybe with this carrier, it's what you said, meaning, hey, like I've got a track record as a broker. You can use my references and the other carriers I've worked with to make you feel more comfortable. Maybe that works. Right. Like, I don't care what it is. I'm going to ask enough questions until I can get to the bottom of it and just do that over and over and over again. And you will get some, some you won't get, but you will get far more than doing nothing. That's the important takeaway. You know, so ask, I had a, th go I had a, a thought on this. The, the one thing that always like surprised <clears throat> me is that like as brokers, we're required to have a bond, which yes. guarantees payment. So I always wondered why, right. like, why is there not like, hey, show me your bond, we'll verify and validate your bond, and that'll at least get us some level of the bonds like, are too small. I think, yeah, that's but why. if it's you know, yeah, you're right, you're right, because I mean, it used to even only be ten grand and not seventy five. Right. But like, if let's say you're brand new, this is your first load, and they're telling you no, it's like this bond is good for seventy five thousand dollars. Correct. Like this, this load is twelve hundred bucks. Uh, yep. But no, I get it. Like in you know, as you're doing more and more business, you're right. That bond is it's very scarce compared to the amount of business that you might do in a month or a week. And and it might not be even credit. It might be that they're worried you're a fraudulent broker and they yeah. got burned two weeks ago, and that's why they don't right. And again, maybe if they get to know you, you can explain the company, where you're located, where you are. Like we had a scenario where one of the guys in our brokerage literally drove and met the driver and handed him a certified check. Like find some solution. I'm not saying that's the one you want to do. I'm just saying there's usually something that can be done if you ask enough questions and really understand why they cannot. And even if it doesn't work with this one, this now you're better informed for the next one. You're learning, right? And now you know what questions to ask, what it might be, what it might not be. You're growing and you're getting better. For sure. Um, last question. What are signs of double brokering to be aware of? Um, so we'll go through a few. 
definitely check out. I did a two part series on this last month. Um, it was how to spot double brokers and then how to prevent them once you've identified them. So I'm going to pull these right from our how to how to identify them. So I had five red flags. Um, number one is no inspection history. And it's funny. We just like we just brought this up. Um, it sure. doesn't always mean that they're a double broker, but if someone's buying up MC numbers left and right or opening new authorities left and right, um, no inspection history is going to be a thing, right? If they don't actually have trucks, they're not going to have an inspection history. So that's, yep. it's a red flag. It doesn't mean that you can't have no inspection history and be a legit carrier. It just means that if you're a double broker and you don't have any trucks, you're not going to have an inspection history. So right. it's not a guarantee, but it's a, it's a morning sign. Um, suspiciously high rates. If the offer seems too good to be true, it probably is. Or too low to be true. What's that? Or too low to be true. If Um, somebody's trying to take a low high rates, uh, high profit, right? If they're offering to give you a, uh, well, let me give you both sides of it, right? Because it could be, if I'm a broker and the carrier's coming in ridiculously low and my profit's too high, warning sign, right? Yep. Um, if I'm a carrier and I'm accepting a way too, um, a rate that seems way too high from a broker, because you, you got to think it, it happens on yep. both sides, right? So e- either way, if the deal seems too good to be true, that's the takeaway. It doesn't, yes. it could be a high rate for one party or too low of a rate for another party. But if it's, if the profit seems too good to be true, it probably is. Um, the other, the other two easy. Pay. That's that's what it comes down yeah. to. The other two easy ones are making sure that you're sending the tender to the verified email address in the FMCSA, right? Like, now that doesn't mean that always works because sometimes fraudulent people can fish an email and get access to a legitimate email. But most of the fraud is like instead of it being the domain name, Ben at. TLC logistics, it's TLC logistics at Gmail, right? Like that's usually a pretty big red flag. That doesn't mean there aren't legitimate carriers with Gmail addresses, but this is a common way to catch them. Um, Using Quickscope, to be honest, I think is one of the best ways to prevent this. Meaning like the product where you know this carrier does not get the pickup information until that MC on that truck is at the location of your shipper. And to me, that's probably the best way to prevent a double brokered load. Yeah, check out Quickscope. There's a link in the description. Um, We're a partner of theirs. We, you know, my entire company is starting to use um, use it. It's a great, uh, you know, per transaction level tool to use um, to prevent fraud at the actual transaction level instead of the pre-vetting level. But I mean, you named a couple other good ones, right? We had mismatched contact information. So if the email domain doesn't match, suspicious address, like a PO box, uh, Glendale, California for a location. Um, And lastly, just, you know, any community reports, whether it's from Highway, uh, the TIA watchdog list, which is managed by Highway, a lot of Excel sheets that get emailed around, um, internal notes in your TMS, these are great ways, but yeah, use the tools out there. Definitely check out QuickScope um, as a as an option to help you add a, an extra layer of protection for a new carrier that you've never done business with, right? QuickScope is great for shippers, brokers, and carriers, right? It lets the shipper know that their load's not going to be in the wrong hands. It lets the broker know that their customer's shipment will not be in the wrong hands, and it lets the carrier know that I'm not being scammed by someone else. It's actually me who's going to get paid for this business, for this loan. Yep. So good stuff. Check out all of our uh, other stuff on double brokering at our website, freight360.net. There's a, I mean, we've got two years Plenty. of d- double broker content at this point, yeah. fraud content. So it's all in there. And keep sending us your questions. We'll answer them. Final thoughts, Ben. Whether you believe you can or believe you can't, you're right. And until next time, go Bills.